still clung to my Irish roots and admired all those people who got through our culture in the upright position. <laughs> a true Irishman walked out of a bar. It could happen. <laughs> career, I met a lot of uh, talented Irish people who somehow leaned against our culture, which can sometimes be a little stifling. Malachi told me just that I saw him, actually, several years ago, interviewed him. And he told a story about his being 11 years old in the company of uh, three or four adults. And he said, I love you, mommy. Or he called her mom. Man. I love you, man. And the adults laughed. Listen to him. He loves you. Huh. What does he know about love? <laughs> and this spoke to me so well. The Irish, the Irish don't want to talk about the love. Except maybe if it's a ball team. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're made nervous by things that are into yeah. And in fact, there are lots of features of our culture that make me even more admiring of Eugene O'Neill, who somehow broke through this. Jimmy Breslin tells a story about a young boy watching a stable boy clean a horse, a horse's foot. And I didn't know this, but apparently the foreleg of a horse is not sensing. He, the horse cannot feel below the first hop or whatever. And so they stick the leg into a pail of boiling water. And then the, the, the stable board, by the way, was a uh, peg leg. It had a wooden leg that was covered by his blue jeans. And an old woman was watching him, and as he did this to the, to the horse, she just gasped. And he said, oh, that ain't nothing, lady. Watch this. He stuck his own foot in. And he wrote about it. And he handed it in, and his nun teacher said, read it, and said, I want you to take this to the principal immediately. <laughs> he, took, he took his little essay, ran down the hallway, knocked on the door, and come in. And there she was, Sister Mary Agony. <laughs> desk and he proudly walked up and handed his little essay to the principal. She read it. She said, do you know why your teacher asked you to bring this down to me? No, sir. S sister was a one-syllable word in grammar school. No, sir. No, sir. Because this is the worst handwriting we have ever seen. <laughs> And Jimmy Breslin concluded his piece by saying, this is why Irish Catholic men can only write one thing, and that's a traffic ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so that makes me all the more in awe of Eugene O'Neill. I, I made a movie. Took me over three, almost four years to do make this movie. It's all you think about morning, noon, and night. Grossly expensive. It was just obscenely expensive. I gave checks to people I didn't know what they did. <laughs> and when we finished it, 
Nobody came to see this movie. <laughs> and I, I mean, you'll go door to door. People who create things, write books, write plays. You know what I mean. You'll go door to door to get people to watch your work. We did win some prizes. We didn't embarrass ourselves. But we sold no popcorn. <laughs> so it was this experience that makes me even more impressed with people who do create this kind of work. Work which is set to the public stage or to the library for the review of people <coughs> for who may not know you. And then that is the test. There's no greater perfect test than that. So imagine how I feel when I read that after his death, after he died, Eugene O'Neill's work, Moon for the Misbegotten, mm -hmm. how many other uh, plays were produced? Like seven or eight. And today, as we speak, he's about to have another work on Broadway. This is the son my mother wanted to have. <laughs> and by the way, he, he had the same kind of crushing culture. The, the, the people who grow up surrounded by nuns who want to know who you think you are. <laughs> and by the way, uh, we're not perfect, because I don't have to tell the uh, assembly here. We have our prejudices. I once gave a speech in which I said, you know, prejudice is a lot like cancer. You don't always know you have. We, we grew up with a white guardian angel helping me across rickety bridges. All the statues in church were white. The Blessed Trinity is white. God the Father had a weird white. Jesus was white. And the Holy Ghost was a white bird. <laughs> and I'm saying you can't come out of this without at least the vestiges of prejudice in your soul. It's not your fault, it's just the nature of what you're exposed to. Well, my mother heard about the speech. <laughs> And she came to me and, and took my head off. There was no prejudice in our neighborhood. I said, Ma, who were the guineas? She said, the Italians. <laughs> and we weren't, weren't encouraged to wonder. Wonder wonder was crushed, you know. Yeah. Who made me, sir? God made you. Sit down. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, remember being awed by the, the woods and the trees and the changing of the colors and the leaves that fell and the brook that babbled down over the rocks. And I remember, what about this? Where is the work? And I, and I would say, who made this girl? And, and certainly the, the, the men would say, God made this. And then your, your, your curiosity was crushed. You just weren't moved to explore. I could have won a Nobel Prize. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe that'd be Steve Jobs. I don't know. <laughs> But out of this culture has come some of the most majestic, beautiful, glorious, insightful, smart works of art expressed on the stage. We find now in the library, moves your heart and soul to read or to see what these geniuses have done for posterity, forever. What a wonderful thing to consider and to think about. 
And guess who's got his name? On an award. <laughs> that also has the name of Eugene O'Neill. <laughs> down at me now. <laughs> and I know that one has looked at the other and said, guess who's got on Eugene O'Neill? <laughs> and the other one will say, God works in strange <laughs> So for all these reasons, and in the memory of my father-in-law, Danny Thomas. <laughs> When I married Rosie Cassinetti, I toasted her. I said, Rosie, I will be faithful to you all my life. I will be faithful to you. You are my one and only love forever and ever. And he looked over to the corner of the room and seated was his father-in-law, who looked at him and said, that's all right. <laughs> I can't tell you how flattering it is to have so many people introduce me. <laughs> you know, you had trouble following Rosie, imagine what I, you know. I want to thank Kevin, my second born, for being here. 